Um, today's nutrition talk, we're going to be talking about um, increasing your veggie intake. That's going to be the number one way that you can fill your plate with volume, but also fill your belly. We've got stretching fibers that live at the top of your stomach. So if your stomach is full, you have that uh, stretching fiber stretches and it sends a message up to your brain that tells your brain you're full, you can stop eating now. So hopefully um, it's helpful. And um, adding veggies to your plate is also gonna help you with not just the macronutrients and getting carbs that you need that are gonna be healthy, but also with getting micronutrients, which are gonna be key to just overall health. Um, is there any housekeeping stuff that you need to do, John? <laughs> as far as... Uh... So we've got coming up um, Murph. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. We've got Memorial Day Murph is coming up. And uh, some people were asking, you know, what are we doing to Murph Prep? And I think that once a week, uh, the programming we're following, you'll see uh, there's going to be some kind of push-up, pull-up, running, and or air squat workout once a week. And if you're doing those things, you're going to be fine. Uh, uh, hello, puppy dog. Uh, and then um, after that, I, think I need to contact uh, uh, the Mastins and see if they're good for us to do the Nate Mastin Memorial on the 5th. That's going to be a Saturday this year, which would be kind of cool. Um, and then I think after that, even before that, let me backtrack about, about a little bit. I think um, we were going to do as a gym, and I don't know if this, I don't think it's open to the public, but as a gym, we're going to be doing um, a half marathon or 10K or full marathon row next Saturday, which sounds crazy. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's up for grabs if anybody's interested. And there's all sorts of ways you can get there. I know that you've done fueling for performance and workouts, and we've talked about that several times. So um, really, and I, I don't know, just kind of as a segue is, you know, performance versus fueling for performance versus eating veggies. Apparently, uh, more veggies are really good energizers for me. And I didn't know that. But um, like, you know, my usual breakfast, I, I will, I eat a bell pepper for breakfast every day. Um, and I've started doubling down on those when I know that my metabolic demands are going to be a little bit higher. And um, oh, where'd you go? Hang on. No. Go. I'm coming back. There we go. And so I've started doubling down on that when the metabolic needs are higher. And um, it's been very successful. So following just a segue into how to get more veggies in for, for an athlete, for somebody who wants to do really well in a workout, find a way to get them in there. You're going to feel a heck of a lot better. That's all I would say. Absolutely. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to share my screen and get you guys this um, nutrition talk going. All right. Okay, so like I mentioned a second ago, we're just talking about increasing your veggie intake. Doesn't sound too super exciting, but it's really going to be one of the ways that we can help make sure that you're, um, you know, meeting micronutrient and macronutrients, increasing the volume that's on your plate without necessarily um, increasing the uh, number of calories that you're taking in or carbs. Um, so it's going to be a great way to um, just have better overall nutrition. So uh, many of you know that we have partnered with Healthy Steps Nutrition. Um, their key phrase that they like to use is that something as fundamental as nutrition should not be complicated. Um, and we really strive to push that in the gym. We want to make sure that um, the information that I'm teaching you uh, the things that we talk about as far as nutrition goes is simple because it does not have to be complicated. It just needs to be something that's sustainable. That's the big thing is that you want to find um, a way to get your nutrition and um, make those changes that you want to make in your physique, in your ability to perform in the gym without, um, you know, cutting out all carbs or 
um, intermittent fasting or keto diets, you know, all those things that um, are just as extremes. It's just not something that's sustainable. So this is going to be um, one of the ways that we try to help support you guys. So just diving right into it. Did you guys know that the CDC reports that only 9% of adults in the U.S. get the recommended amount of vegetables each day? So the question is, what is the recommended amount of vegetables? Well, the current Dietary Guidelines for Americans, which is from 2015 to 2020, recommends that people that get a 2,000 calorie a day diet include two cups of fruit and two and a half cups of vegetables in their daily diet. So the USDA, USDA food consumption surveys have found that the average American falls short of this, consuming only 0.9 cups of fruit and 1.4 cups of vegetables per day. So that's not gonna yeah. be what we need. So yeah. this is a great time to um, just reflect, look back, you know, look at what did you eat yesterday? Maybe over this last weekend, how many different vegetables did you consume? How many total vegetables do you think that you have? And are you part of the 9% who did not get enough vegetables or are you part of the majority? Or 9% who, who did get enough vegetables or part of that majority that has fallen short? Either way, we totally understand. It really can be difficult to hit the recommended daily amount. So we wanna give you some uh, tips today that can help you to get closer to joining that 9%, but keeping it simple. So step number one, clean and chop your veggies ahead of time. And this is one that I definitely advocate for. I'm going to show you guys a video real quick. Um, I posted this on our um, Instagram not too long ago. Um, let's see. Can share it. There we go. Um, this is just time lapse of me chopping veggies. So this took me like 20 minutes. I take a bag of um, baby carrots, dump them into a box. That's the easiest way to go. Celery, chop it up, put all my strips into a box, put all the other pieces into a separate container because they're a little bit more bitter and I use it to make um, chicken noodle soup. And then bell peppers, I cut out the, the seeds in the center, and then I add to it my, um, or slice, cut it into slices, put them into a box, and then chopped up the, um, the carrots that I had not finished the week before, put them into a box with those little bitter bits of um, uh, celery that I had chopped up. Somewhere in there, I chopped a couple of um, cucumbers, and so then I end up with this box, a uh, stack of boxes that I just put in the drawer in the refrigerator. So I've got um, baby carrots, celery sticks, cucumber, and bell pepper in my fridge at all times. And when I get down to the end of the week and I'm like, oh my gosh, I still have all of these bell peppers. We have um, either we make spaghetti with the bell peppers or we make fajitas. If I still have carrots and celery, I chop them up, add some onion, put it in the freezer, and that's what a, that's going to be like a kit that I've made to make a chicken noodle soup in the crock pot. So that's one of the things that I think is really key. Um, chopping them up ahead of time is going to be really important. Um, so raise your hand if you've been super motivated at the grocery store, bought all the fresh veggies, and then you find them wilting at the back of the fridge the next week. I know I've done that. We've all yeah. been there. This can lead to feeling discouraged and maybe shying away from buying those vibrant, fresh vegetables at the grocery store. So that's why the first tip is gonna be simply just cleaning and cutting your veggies ahead of time. Um, I showed you guys what it looks like for me when I get home from the store, I just block out 20 to 30 minutes, wash, chop all my veggies. Um, and I usually do slice bell pepper, cucumber, carrot, uh, baby carrots is the easiest way for me. And then um, sometimes I'll do chopped broccoli. And once they're washed and cut and portioned out, I put them in little containers or I put them in, into bags and that way they're easy for grab and go for the week. And I usually, when I'm meal prepping for the week for uh, work, I'll take a handful of out of each box and then make one box that I've just got 
that goes into my lunchbox. Okay. Um, so a uh, bonus tip, um, when you've got those containers of pre-chopped veggies ready to go, store them front and center in the refrigerator because when you see them and they're already ready to go, it makes it a lot easier to go than choosing those other convenient options that maybe are a little bit more highly processed that you find in the pantry. Um, I know that I've had a nutrition client tell me um, for, he's got little kids and he told me that um, they found that the kids don't necessarily want the processed food, but they want something that they can independently grab without having to ask mom and dad, can I have some grapes or can I have some goldfish or something like that? And so they found that if they just took and they plucked all the grapes off of the vine and had them ready to go for the kids or having chopped vegetables like this, the kids will grab whatever is easiest to grab. So um, next, um, let's see. So next tip is gonna be trying different methods of cooking like roasting or air frying your vegetables. This is one of my easiest meals to make um, or side dishes, I guess you could say. It's literally just two, or I guess you could call it three ingredients, but broccoli and I put it out on a pan either on um, some uh, parchment paper or on um, aluminum foil because those are easy to just grab off of the pan and then throw away and have less work cleaning up afterwards. Um, and then I spray it with cooking spray and then pour coarse salt on top and then just throw it in the oven. So a lot of times we hear from people, um, adults and kids saying that they don't like a certain vegetable. And after taking time to dive a little bit deeper into that, usually it comes down to they don't like the way that the food was cooked. So uh, depending on the cooking method, it can create um, either a texture or a flavor or maybe a color. You look at these, this broccoli here and it looks really pale and sad. <laughs> um, so if you've ever had steamed or like overly steamed broccoli or maybe broccoli that was cooked in the microwave for too long, um, it does not keep the vibrant green color. It usually turns to a dingy brown. This texture can be described as like mushy. And that texture is often what is what what is unwanted, especially by kids. So um, this is why a lot of people tell me that they don't like broccoli. But it can be easy to write off a food with an experience like that. And that's why uh, we recommend trying different cooking methods like air frying or baking. Um, so did you know that it takes anywhere from 12 to 15 times of trying a new food? before you can really decide if you like or dislike the food. And when I say 12, 15 times, it's not 12 to 15 bites in one sitting, it's 12 to 15 different incidences of trying that different food. Especially mm. if you consider like different seasoning and different ways of cooking those foods. So when you or your little one say that you don't like the broccoli that's sitting on the table, for example, maybe it's the way that it's cooked. So if you try steaming your vegetables, maybe try roasting it, the texture, um, or the way that it feels in your mouth is going to be so important when it uh, comes to experience with your food and deciding if you really like something. So using that same broccoli example, you can try lightly covering your broccoli that's chopped with olive oil, salt, pepper, any other seasonings that you'd like. I know that Dawn likes um, anything, everything but the bagel, right? Everything bagel, yeah, everything bagel seasoning. <laughs> Um, and you can throw it into a preheated oven at 400, bake it on a lined baking sheet for 20 minutes, and then it comes out crunchy, flavorful, and it's a veggie that you and everyone else can get excited about. So if you have an air fryer, you can prepare it the same, do air fry at seven, 375 for about eight to 10 minutes. Um, I know, I remember the first time that I did this, I made broccoli in like, you know, put it on my husband's plate and later in the day he, or later in that meal, he was like, this is really good. What did you put on it? And I was like, salt. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So, um, so if you're looking for more recipes 
um, to experiment with flavored flavors for vegetables that you can enjoy, make sure you check out our website at cfthrone.com slash nutrition, or maybe it's slash recipe, healthy recipes, I think it's slash healthy underscore recipes. Um, and um, we've got tons of recipes on there and most of them are vegetable based. So uh, the next tip is gonna be sneaking veggies into your meals. So odds are, if you are a parent, that you know exactly what we mean, but maybe you don't know how to execute that plan. So if you don't, tip number three is just suggesting that you find a creative way to add vegetables into a dish with great flavor so it feels incorporated into the food that you're making or eating, rather than needing to get through having half of a plate of veggies on the side of your plate that you can actually see. So here's a few of our favorite recipes that can help you to do this. So we've got on here um, egg muffins. I know this is one of John's favorites. Um, mm. And the meatloaf muffins, right? Your family just calls them meat muffins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then at the bottom, we've got this uh, zucchini lasagna. So these are all great for so many reasons, um, such as providing a delicious way to add more vegetables into your day. It's an easy recipe. Um, all of these are easy recipes, usually only take about 10 minutes to prep. Um, and both the meat muffins and the egg um, muffins are made in a muffin tin. So they're already individually portioned, which is great. And recipes like this are great because they, you can use vegetables that are maybe, maybe the ones that are at the end of the week and you're like, I need to use up these bell peppers or mushrooms or onions. Um, green onion is really good in the egg muffins when you put it with like um, little bits of um, like ham or bacon. Um, so another fan favorite is gonna be the, the zucchini lasagna. Um, and it gives you the option to have um, what we would call like a comfort meal, but it's with veggies and a lot less overall calories. So definitely take the time to try to try some of these recipes this next week um, and let us know what you guys think. So the next tip, this is gonna sound really weird, but adding frozen riced cauliflower to your smoothies. What? Yes. What? Sorry, yes. I know it sounds crazy, but you can't taste it. And it does not really, it adds cream, creaminess to the, um, texture of your smoothie without adding much calories or carbs. So you might be thinking, what in the world? But I swear by this. Adults and kids love it. Here's two recipes. So we've got strawberry shortcake smoothie. All you need is unsweetened almond milk, sliced strawberries, frozen rice cauliflower, raw cashews, vanilla extract, and then strawberry flavored protein powder. Um, and then, oh, I didn't have the picture of the other one. So the other one is if you're a chocolate lover, there's a chocolate peanut butter smoothie. Um, so all you need to make that one is going to be unsweetened almond milk, banana, a frozen rice, cauliflower, and creamy peanut butter, and some chocolate protein powder. So one cup of cauliflower gives um, the milkshake like consistency and it adds additional fiber, vitamin C, folate, choline, and other amazing micronutrients that help our bodies to feel their best. Cauliflower is likely best known for also being an antioxidant. So you can find those recipes on our website at cfthrone.com slash healthy underscore recipes. Um, so the last tip that we have is adding veggies to your breakfast. So one of the things that we just talked about a second ago in the uh, favorite recipes is going to be those egg muffins. So this is a great way to add um, veggies because you can just kind of throw everything in there. So I think about it like, oh, I want to have some like fajita breakfast today. So I'll do mushroom, onion, bell pepper, and maybe some tomatoes. Or um, you can think about 
Like I think in, in this recipe, they've got like broccoli and bell pepper um, and some um, onion. So I think about it like an omelet, like Denver omelet, you know, or different kind of omelets that you can get at a restaurant. Um, okay. So this is, I don't think it um, formatted right when I changed it over to Google Slides, um, but I have this um, form for you guys if you want it for free, um, but we call it Friday Friday. So thinking about like, we're gonna try a new recipe, maybe a new vegetable once a week and you pick your day, Friday is a great day for that. Um, and you say, okay, I'm going to try this food. We're going to cook it this way. And then describe to yourself, like, what did that taste like? How could I have changed it? Is it a, a go or a no? Um, and just take notes on it, you know, um, deciding is this a good recipe that we can add into our weekly shuffle of food or no? Um, I think that's it. <laughs> Good stuff, Heather. Good stuff. I'm still blown away by the cauliflower smoothie, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, eating vegetables is crucial for your health and wellness. And studies show that a diet that is rich in vegetables decreases the risk for cardiovascular disease, diabetes, weight gain, GI complications, vision, and some cancers. So we hope that you guys have found these five tips to be helpful and that the recipes that we've mentioned are helpful in helping you to find ways that you can increase your vegetable intake and reach your short and long-term health and wellness goals. If you're looking for more guidance, support, accountability, to increase your vegetables or just work on any of your other um, nutrition and health and wellness goal um, habits um, that are needed for long-term success. Schedule a free intro appointment with me. I'm happy to look over what your goals are and how we can help you to get there. So, Kim, hey. any questions? I think Kim is watching on Facebook. Okay. There might be a delay. No. John, what questions do you have for me? I have no questions. I thought that was excellent. I just, I think I'm so excited because if people see these videos, it's, it's going to help a ton. Yeah. Cool. Well, all of our um, different nutrition seminars that we have done are, they are all posted on our YouTube channel. Um, and I think there's like 13, now there'll be 14 up there. Throughout both of our challenges, I went ahead and uploaded all of those. So if you guys have any questions about performance nutrition, um, increasing your veggies, how to make your um, diet successful. I mean, we've got all kinds of topics up there. So great information. And of course I'm always available at the gym to answer your questions. All right. So, thank so, you, Heather. Yeah, um, I think, and you don't have to stay on for this part, but I think that I'm going to do a cooking demo. <laughs> this cool. Is, uh, this was a suggestion that I had from our mentor this last month um, to do a cooking demo. So I was going to cook the um, egg roll in a bowl. Um, this is one of my favorite recipes because it's like super veggie packed and so easy to do. Um, I think that after the, the first time that I made it, my, my husband was like, so you could like wrap that, right? <laughs> and put it in a uh -huh. I was like, uh -huh. so the point of it <laughs> is to have it be unwrapped to save some carbs. Um, but usually what I do whenever I'm making the egg roll in a bowl is I, I make the egg roll in a bowl and then I also do some 
Um, I call it fried rice, but I'm allergic to rice. And so what I do is um, like a fried quinoa. So I do um, quinoa and um, I think the, the biggest trick to all of it is, um, this is my secret ingredient. Have you ever had coconut aminos? No, I've not. Okay, so it's like soy sauce, but it's lower in sodium. And no soy. And no soy, and Chad's allergic to soy. So. Hey, uh, I do need to drop off so I can eat before I go back up to the gym, but um, I'll catch up with you on the other side, okay? Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Yeah. All right, so if anybody's still with me, I am cooking egg roll in a bowl. This is the recipe of the month that we had for um, for last month. And so um, we had a QR code hanging up at the gym where you could um, like scan and pull up this recipe. It's super easy. The original recipe only had um, three ingredients. So this is ground turkey. Um, and then of course, this is called coconut aminos. And then we also have um, like a tri-colored coleslaw. So this coleslaw is um, green cabbage, carrots, and red cabbage. I personally add a couple of other things to it just because it adds some great flavor. So I use um, chopped ginger, and this is chopped garlic. Of course, you can like buy the actual root vegetables yourself and, um, and chop them up. But I personally, I feel like it's worth the cost to, um, to buy the um, pre-chopped stuff. And then I also, um, add in cheese and carrots. So the trick to this, go ahead and cook the ground turkey. This is usually the part that takes the most time. So while I'm cooking the ground turkey, um, I'm going to get everything else ready in my pressure cooker. And this is what's like super cool about this recipe is it makes it so easy. So just throw the coleslaw and I'm gonna do about half of this bag of peas and carrots. Like I mentioned a second ago, I do um, like fried rice, fried, fried quinoa. And I'll do, when I do that, I do quinoa, coconut aminos, and some more peas and carrots in the quinoa. And then I actually fry an egg in it as well. So I'm gonna do about half of this bag of peas and carrots. And then put the rest of it back into the freezer. And I have my little cooking buddy down here. Um, so, so just waiting on the ground turkey to finish cooking. And this is just one pound of ground turkey. Like I mentioned a second ago, this is some ground ginger and I like the flavor of it. So I'm going to add quite a bit. Let's put that straight in there. And some chopped garlic. Okay, 
Usually when I make this meal for my family, I do the fried rice, and then we also do like a stir fry of vegetables. And so we do, um, I just buy a frozen bag of California blend, um, which is gonna be carrots, um, broccoli, and cauliflower. And then I add to it some zucchini and squash that I've already um, cut myself. And I add um, big chunks of um, mushroom as well. All right, so the ground turkey is almost done. I'm going to add the coconut aminos into the um, the air fryer. All right, this is my air fryer slash pressure cooker. And then I'm also going to add some um, chicken broth. I always buy the bone broth because it's higher in protein and I get the one that's kind of low sodium just for fun. So what I do after this is cooked, I'm going to take the the juices that cook off of this, like I actually strain it through a strainer. And then I've got like a, a broth base to make a soup. And I can usually I'll top up some green onion and maybe put some noodles in it. And this is like super, this is the hardest part about making this meal. Everything else that is thrown into the pressure cooker. And what's kind of silly is that we're just going to set the pressure cooker for zero minutes. So it doesn't even take any time. Like what that does is it just uh, brings the pressure cooker up to pressure and temperature and then it turns off and that's it. So that's it. I'm done with all the cooking part. And now I'm just going to put the cooker lid on and set it to zero minutes. Sometimes it's kind of stubborn about wanting to start on zero minutes, but that's it. All right. So now I'm going to have my um, egg roll in a bowl ready and tons and tons of veggies. Super easy meal. If you guys have any questions about it or if you're looking for the recipe, you can just go to our website at cfthrone.com slash healthy underscore recipes um, or just ask me questions at the gym. I'm happy to answer them. So I'm going to go ahead and end this um, Facebook live, but y'all have a great day.